How's everybody doing this morning? Come on. Recovering from the conference. Raise your hand if you got to come. You got to come? Come on. I met a lot of us. Awesome. Uh, I, uh, I don't think I've recovered, and I don't think I want to recover. I, uh, man, I've, I, I, even one night this week, uh, I woke up in the middle of the night, and I, I've, I've just felt this, this tenderness, and I just started, just, I feel like even in worship, just start weeping before the Lord. And uh, I just feel this, this love for Jesus. And I, I feel like for me, um, just got, in a way, recalibrated. Just got recalibrated uh, for this man named Jesus. For this person that, 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 like, man, we've just laid down our life for this one person, and his name is Jesus. And this man, has, he's wrecked my life. And I think about just being right here and why, why I'm here, why I'm standing here today is because I've, I, I just I want to follow this man. I want to follow this person of Jesus and give him everything that I can, give him my entire life. And I, I, feel, um, I feel like there's grace for us to repent. I mean, you know, repentance is good. You know, it's his kindness that leads us to repentance. It's his kindness that uh, leads us to a place where uh, he actually, what he wants to do is he wants to bring us into more. He wants to actually bless our life even more. He actually wants to to move us from one place into a, a new place so that I can actually experience more of God in my life. And um, I, I, I've, I've felt this. Uh, we're going to try to start a sermon series today. Um, we're going to try to start one on Ephesians. I love Ephesians. And uh, it's, it's one of my, I don't know, I feel like I say that about every scripture. But it is one of my favorite books. Um, <clears throat> but I, I feel like there's, there's grace in this moment to stop some things that we've been doing. I think there's, there's grace right now. To, I, I felt this earlier as well that we're, we're stepping into, I feel like a new season is in the air. Like there's a there's an opportunity for us to to step into a new place with God and um, and I think a lot of it too is around our character is around the way that we're living our life where I'm finding comfort I, I felt this phrase that um, God's inviting you into more but you're going to have to let go of control God's inviting you into more but you're going to have to let go of control. <laughs> <laughs> that always sounds good and fun, and we're always like, amen, like, I love that, like, come on, G, you know, but it's like, man, even, I'm like, man, I, I'm going to have to let go. There's some things in my life that I'm going to have to let go of. There's places in my life that I'm finding comfort in. There's things that we find comfort in. You know, there's things that we, we find uh, rest in and refuge in and disconnection in and... <laughs> There's things that we find life in that, that, the, that don't actually give us life. They don't actually give us a, 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 a peace that passes understanding, love that passes knowledge. And that's what the Father is offering us. And I feel it, though. I feel it in this, this like, kindness of God place. It's, it's, it's not in a God's up here talking down to you, like, you need to get right. You need to get better. You're just this filthy old rag that needs to come up. Like, no, I, I feel his love inviting us into more. Stephanie said this, and it, it, it was so true for me, too. I remember I used to try to get right with God, and it was from a legalistic place. It was from this place of like, I just want to get right. I'm trying to get my life together. I know that God's mad at me. I know that God's not mad at me. Like he, but I know, you know, it's like, it's that feeling of like, God's mad at me and I, I got to get right. And I want to, I want to please him. I want to earn his love. I want to try to earn his favor. I want to see miracles. I want to see God show up powerfully in my life. So I've got, I've got to get right with God. But now I feel that of like, no, it's, it's because God loves me. It's because he is wild about me. It's because, and, and he has demonstrated this, and we see this in the scripture. It's, it's this tender love that God's inviting me into a place of more. And, uh, and I think there's some things in our life. There's, there's sin in our life. There's stuff that I think God wants to recalibrate. 
And there's grace. I just feel like there's grace right now for that in our lives. And um, we're going to see what happens, but we're going to jump in Ephesians. Uh, anybody love the Word? Yes. Come on. You love the Bible? You love this, 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 this book? Man, I, I really, uh, this book sets the world straight. I mean, it, it, set, it sets my world straight. It, it, it recalibrates me. It, it uh, changes me. And uh, Ephesians, uh, what I, I love Ephesians because Paul, chapters 1 through 3, is, is really him exploring the gospel. He's, he's, he's communicating to us uh, this gospel, what Jesus has done for us. And we're going to get into that for just a minute. And then he jumps into uh, chapters 4 through 6, which are really about how this gospel affects my life. How many of you know character does matter? Like, if there's one thing that I would love to do um, and a passion that I have, and I feel like it's something that we keep sneaking further into, is we, we love the Holy Spirit. Like, I, I want to be a Spirit-filled, like, I think, honestly, we're charismatic at like a four. I want to see us at a charismatic at like a ten. Like, I, I, I love, like, I'm just all about it. I, I want to, I, I think there's so much more of God that we can experience in God, and it's not just for the sake of being charismatic. Uh, it's because I actually believe it's biblical. It's because I actually believe it's in the the B I B L E, and uh, and I wanna I wanna ex- and I'm I'm like man I wanna I'm gonna I'm gonna keep pushing us into that and going after that, and uh, and I, I just I want Acts two to be a reality here. Like I just want the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that there is no cap on what God can do. That I don't want to put any control on that. I just want to yield to him and follow him. And ultimately, that's the heart. The heart is, is I want to follow God. I want to yield to what the Holy Spirit is doing. And then the truth is, is to have the courage to follow him. That, that's actually where the rubber hits the road, at least for Jonathan, is that I feel those, those unctions. I feel those things in my heart where I feel God's calling me into more. The question is, is do I have the courage to follow him? To say yes, to say yes, to let my yes be louder than my no, to let my yes to God, and so we we love that. And then, but I, but I also want how much? How many of you know that we need healthy character, that it's purity and it's power, that it's it's walking in in both of these. That we are a church, a community that is is uh, n- uh, n- not okay in a sense with with sin. And, and actually being able to, not in a shameful way, but able to step into the light and be able to, to expose the darkness. And that is, that's also scary. So welcome to a church that's probably going to be scary. Like welcome, like that, 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 that is, th- those are two, two places that, that honestly are, are, are challenging. But how many of you know the church needs that? I know I do. I know, I know a heart for Jonathan is as best that I can is to step into the light, even as the pastor, as a leader, that I lead with vulnerability, that I lead with that, that people know me, that I'm not a hidden person that nobody knows, and that there's accountability to what we're doing and that we actually want to grow. And so um, I feel like Ephesians does that. I feel like Ephesians just unpacks this amazing uh, gospel and we're going to get into the first part of this chapter one today. And it's really about, chapter one is about what this Jesus, this God, our King, has done for us. And when you read this, and if you, I think as we walk through this, I, I, I want this to impact you and impact me. That, that, there, um, that this impacts, because there's some, some amazing language in here of what Christ has done for us. So the... the Chapter one, it actually opens up with a, an amazing Jewish poem. Uh, it praises God for what Christ has done for us. Uh, the Father, it talks about how the Father has has purpose to choose and bless a covenant people that He wants to be in covenant relationship with us, and that through Jesus, anyone, all of us, can be adopted into this family. And that he, he, he goes to this place where he, his purpose, according to his pleasure, is to align everything under the headship of Christ. That, God, that his purpose, his, his, according to his pleasure and his goal, is to align us, people, under the headship of Christ. And um, there's no better place to be. 
No better place to be than under the headship of Jesus Christ. There's no better place to be than under the headship of him. Um, and I want to I talk about that, and really Paul kind of gives why. So in Ephesians, we're going to read Ephesians 1, 3, and I'm going to go through some verses here. Starting in verse 3, it says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. Listen to this. He has blessed us in heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin, in accordance with the rich riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. And he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times will be reached their fulfillment, to bring all things in heaven and on earth, guess what? Heaven and on earth together under the head, even Christ. So listen, listen to some of this. I just wrote some of this out just to recap some of that. He says, Bless, he blessed us in heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. That's all of them. So he blessed us with all of them. He chose us in him. In love, he predestined us. I'm going to come back to this. To it to be adopted as his sons through Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. He has freely given us his glorious grace. We have redemption through his blood, forgiveness of sins. He lavished on us his grace with all wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery of his will. Love his word, predestination. Just a little theology word that, that we love to throw around. You know what it means to me is that Jesus had a pre-service meeting. He had a pre-service meeting. He had a meeting, him, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They had a meeting, and they're like, hey, we're going to give people freedom. Watch out. <laughs> we're going to give people freedom. We're, gonna, we're actually going to give them um, this freedom, and they're going to take this because I don't want to create robots. I want to create people that actually have a choice to love me. And so he gave people freedom. He made them in his own image and in his own likeness because he has freedom. And he is love. And he gave them the opportunity to live in relationship with him and gave them that choice. And he knew that he predestined this, that, you know what, he even, it says that before the foundation of the world, Christ was slain. It talks about this, like that even before the world was formed, that he knew that people were going to make a mistake. But you know what's amazing is that God doesn't change, that he didn't turn his love off that he kept his love on. And he made a decision that he was going to send his son to die on a cross for us so that we could be reconciled back to God. That we, he knew that when he gave us freedom that we were going to make a mistake, we were going to sin, and that he put in place a plan to redeem us, to forgive us, so that we could have relationship back with him. And this is our great and glorious God, that he never turned off his love towards us. I would even say this. I, I believe that, um, that when we make a mistake, that, that I do believe this, that when we make a mistake, God doesn't turn his love off towards us. If I'm going to experience God's love, I need to know that God loves me. If I'm going to fully experience the love of God, then I need to understand that he loves me. And that his love for me is never turned off. That he always loves me. That, that his end of the bargain, like his side, his love doesn't change. His love is always moving towards me. And he demonstrated this in the, the, in the, the life of Jesus. You know, my, my son, uh, he just started playing basketball and uh, he, this, this year. And... Uh, and I, there's a couple games I, I wasn't able to go to. And my, my dad, uh, he was at the game, and he sent me the little video clips. You know, they're like the ESPN highlight reels. <laughs> so he sends me his little, the little video clips. And, and, I, and, 
And I like I could wait to watch them. I was like I was so excited to watch these little, little highlight reels, and uh, and he shows he sends the videos and I watch them and you know the all all I can see is my son. All I can see is him. There's about there's obviously more kids on the court and they're awesome and love them, <laughs> but I, I am I mean all I don't I don't even I don't even recognize them. All I'm all I can see is my son. And I am just watching my son. And it doesn't matter if he makes it, which it, it does matter. Uh, it, when he does make it, it does make me happy. Uh, and, and I'm just watching, like, and, and my eye, my attention, my affection is just towards my son. And, and this is what, this is God towards us. Like, he, he is, all he sees is us. And not only that, but he adopted us. And every single one of us has the, the, the opportunity to receive the adoption. Like he, he is all, he's already done that. The question is, is am I going to believe that? Am I going to receive what he's done for me and the adoption that he has for me? Um, <clears throat> I, uh, I, if you've been here for a little while, you've heard some of my story. Um, but I remember, it's probably about four years ago, four or five years ago now. Um, but I had... Um, <clears throat> Messed up with pornography. And I remember, um, and I, I remember, I, I, wanted, I wanted to hide. I wanted that, that was safer, felt safer. I, I wanted to um, not step into the light. I wanted to, you know, it, it, it's because I wanted self-preservation. Here I am, I'm a pastor, I'm married, I've got kids. You know, you're like, I, I need, I want to protect myself because if I step into the light, um, People might not like me. <laughs> People, I, if I step into the light, like that, that, you know, there's there's fear of of like, man, if I do this, you know, obviously, what's the consequences of that? And I chose to step into the light. And and I remember in, in one of just one of the moments in this, and 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 praise be to God that I've been free from that for like four or five years, and uh, which is awesome for me because it was something that, come on, it was something that I had struggled with for a long time, and uh, and to. To be able to live in freedom, um, there's nothing like it. You know, there's, there, this is the opportunity that God has for us. And I, I still, I feel this, there's grace. There's, if I feel grace on anything today, I feel like there's some things in our life. It could be porn. It could be addictions. It could be sin. It could be whatever. But I feel like there's grace to stop it. There's grace to step out of it. And the way to step out of it is to step into the light which is always one of the scariest things to do is to come into the light. But I remember I did that, and I called Joaquin, and here I am. This guy's been a, he's one of our overseers. He's, he's a mentor to me, and I'm, you know, like, they're, they're, you're like, man, how's he going to respond? And I remember having a conversation, I remember the first conversation I had with him, and there was more to the conversation than this, but he took probably the first, like, five or ten minutes of that, that time that when I shared and confessed this to him, and he just loved on me. And he just started to speak truth over me. And he started to say, this is how I see you. I know that some people may say this, but, but Jonathan, this is how I see you. I see you as pure. I see you as somebody. I see you. I've seen your faithfulness. I know, I know you, and I believe in you, and I love you. And, it, and I remember he even started to ask about Kate and how Kate was doing with that and, and, and just poured out his love. And it was, it was the Father's love that he didn't turn off his love towards me. And this is, this is the father to us, that when we step into the light, it's like there's an opportunity. Instead of when I put on the Kevlar and I put on protection and I self-preserve, I'm, I'm building insulation from love. I'm actually not able to receive love because I'm hiding and I'm protecting myself instead of stepping into the light and being able to receive the love of the father. And it's in that love. It's when I experience that love, like, man, that, that is a force that changes me. Like, yes, is there repentance? Is there some things that I need to walk through and overcome? Yes. But experiencing the love of God, and I believe that that is one thing that Paul is hitting here in Ephesians, is that God loves you. That you've got a daddy in heaven that is a perfect, good father that loves you absolutely. What else this God does in this that I think is so powerful is he gives you a new identity. The Father gives us a blessed identity. You know, that's, that's something that fathers do. 
And I believe this even in society, that one of the, the roles of a father is to instill identity, is to instill this is who you are. You know what's, what's kind of neat? I went and looked this up, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it's true, <laughs> is that it's the sperm that actually determines the gender. That it's the sperm that, that actually determines if it's a male or female. That, um, and and there, there's something powerful about a father that gives us identity. And this is what the, our Father in heaven does for us, is he instills that I am, a, I am a beloved son. I'm a beloved daughter. Like This is who God says that I am. And if, if, if that can get in me, man, if I can get that God's a good father and I can see what he's done for me and I see his love and I understand my identity, this is a lot of what we go after in KMI, about 90% of your problems will go away. <laughs> Well, not all of them, but like if you can get if you can get that framework of like, man, this is this is how this is how I engage with God that He is a good Father, and that He loves me. I, I remember a, a big season of my life, big season of my Christian life. I had the the performance mentality thing going on. Anybody live in that world? And it's like what the performance thing. It's not you know performing is not necessarily bad. It's it's when I'm performing for love. I'm performing. My identity is based upon what I do instead of who I am. And it's like I'm living out of, of, of this performance. That's the framework of how I, I interact with God. So God is this big master in heaven, and I'm the servant. And if he's going to love me and I'm going to earn his reward, if I'm going to pray for the sick and people get healed, then I've got to get on the treadmill of performance and work my butt off, and one day God's going to use me. And, I, I, buddy, I, I did that. My first probably five, six, seven, eight years of Christianity was, was performing. And I was trying to work as hard as I could. I remember one time I prayed for five hours straight in tongues. I was like, I'm just nonstop. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to pray, 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 pray. And I'm going to fast. And, and how many of you know praying in tongues is a good thing? Praying is a good thing. Spending time with God is a good thing. But when I have a, a, a faulty belief system about God, man, I end up doing a lot of work and a lot of things that are not necessarily necessary. <laughs> and it's... <clears throat> But if I can get the, the framework of he's a good father and I'm a son, and, and this is what's changed for me, is I've gone, I've, my life has gone a lot more down receiving and partnering because he's given me an inheritance. You know what it says if you read this, if we'll, we'll keep, I'll go through this. Um, <clears throat> you, you got a great deposit. <laughs> you got actually a really big deposit. You ready? In Ephesians 1 and 11, it says, In him we were also chosen. That just breaks a lot of lies off of you. You were chosen. You didn't get left out. You don't have to live under the fear of rejection. You were chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will in, in order that we who were the first to hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also, so I think he's kind of talking about the Jews and him and being the first to hope in Christ. And now he's talking to the Ephesians and he says, you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having believed. You were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. I, I love this. That like The seal, the guarantee is the Holy Spirit. That God has given us the Holy Spirit. And that is, the, that is the deposit that guarantees this inheritance that God has. Isn't that awesome? Like, that's a, that's a pretty good deposit. I would say your bank account's full. I would say you got plenty of resources. <laughs> that you are a loaded weapon. That God has, has given us this Holy Spirit who is God and he lives inside of us. And now I get to walk with God. I get to walk in relationship with him. And this is what my relationship with him looks like. Come on. <clears throat> see if I got some more notes. <laughs> I, um, <clears throat> I really... I think a, a, a big heart for me in, in Ephesians it, that I see that Paul's doing is that he starts with chapters 1 through 3. 
And then he goes into, and we're going to kind of unpack that. He goes into four through six. And one through three is, it's the gospel. It's what Jesus has done for us. It's the salvation that he has made available to us. It's what he's, he's given us, and it's, and it's God's heart for the planet, that God's heart for everything in heaven and on earth is to come under the alignment of Christ, to come under his, his headship. And then, and, and really that's what he made available for us, and then he talks about how this is impacting our life. Oftentimes, we can start with the behavior. And again, it's kind of that performance mentality. I start with, I've got to get right. I've got to get myself right. And we, we miss the foundation or the belief system or the, the framework of he's a good father and I'm a beloved son. And that this is how I'm going to operate and this is how I'm going to interact with God. And I'm going to live my life from that. And in that, I'm going to walk over here and I want to live out the character of God. I want to live it out in my family. I want to live it out in my community. I want to live it out, and I want to be, as we say, a kingdom person and live that out. Um, alignment with God. It, it talks about this. Um, I want to hit this just for a second. The uh, alignment with Christ. Um, how many of you know, I, I believe this to be true, um, and I, I would say this is probably supported by our sponsors, um, that, um, that, that the principles of Jesus just work. The teachings of Jesus. Like, I believe if the planet just lived out of the principles of Christ, out of the kingdom principles, that the world would be a lot better place. Like, if we just lived out of kingdom principles, if people lived in forgiveness, if people told the truth in love, if people didn't harbor bitterness and resentment, um, if people honored everybody, uh, if people actually lived with a heart to love, and to carry each other's burdens, and to forgive one another. Like if we just lived out of those principles, those principles are, are gold. I believe those principles point to the prince. They point to the king. That just like creation, the further you get into creation, you're, it's gonna, you're gonna, eventually you're going to run into there's a creator. You can try to think it all you want, but it's like at some point you're going to find that his fingerprint is on everything. And that the more I try to figure this thing out, I'm going to find out that I've got to have faith in something. <laughs> that nothing didn't just come out of, you know, create everything. That there was, that I'm going to have to have faith and that you're going to find that, that God is real and that Christ, and I really, I just believe that because he's the creator and he created everything. And I believe his principles are the same way. You're going to find out that if I live in forgiveness, like who's Mr. Forgiveness? It's Jesus. Who's, who is the source of love? It's Christ. Like, who's the one that actually lives in honor? It's him, and his principles are going to point us to him. But <clears throat> if I don't yield my heart to Jesus and give my life to him, then I miss it. It's like I miss the source of love. I miss the, the one that, that actually gives me the peace that passes understanding, the one that loves beyond, beyond my knowledge, and he is the source of love. And it all comes out of a yielded heart to him. And how many of you know that when I'm in alignment with him, there's so much more blessing inside the kingdom than outside the kingdom. Like there's so much more inside of a life that's yielded to Christ. And there's so much more that I get to experience and walk in and have purpose. And he, here's what Christ does for us. He, he breaks lies off of us. He breaks the lies of, of rejection, the fear of punishment, the, the orphan spirit, the, the, the lie that I don't belong. You know, there's just so much that this Jesus does for us, and, and he transforms us into the best versions of ourselves where we can actually have the greatest impact on the planet. And I think it's so awesome that we get to partner with his kingdom on the earth. I will say this about alignment is when we line with Christ— you want to know how you know how you're aligned? And I'm a pastor, so I get to say this. Is that you're brought into a body. You want to know how I know that I'm aligned with him? Is that I'm not isolated. Because he is going to pull. If I'm, if I'm yielding to the Holy Spirit and I'm yielding to him, he's going to, and he's the head, he's got a body. And I'm going to be a part of and in relationship with. I'm going to, as you get it more into Ephesians, I'm going to submit one to another. 
I'm going to live inside of community. And the truth of the, the matter is, is that if I'm not in healthy, powerful, in the light relationships in a body of Christ, I am not going to be sharp. <laughs> I'm not actually going to live out the best version of myself. Iron sharpens iron, and when I don't have that going on, guess what? I'm dull. I lose impact. I lose. I might be able to have my own little world over here that I live in, but if I'm not living in community and I'm not living in relationship the way that God designed it, then, like, man, I, I am not going to fully live out who God's called me to be. I believe that, <clears throat> and I'm a pastor, and I lead a church, so. You can laugh. Um, I want to. I want to land here. I'm going to read this in Ephesians uh, one, starting fifteen, verse fifteen. It says, "For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you." Remembering you in my prayers, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. I mean, listen to this. Listen to what Paul's saying here. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and his incomparable great power for us who believe. The power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him in his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all authority, power, and dominion and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be the head over everything, the church, which is the body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. That's a mouthful. There's so much in there that's so powerful. And one of the, the things that, that sticks out to me in this is that he wants us, you and me, to experience him, to know him. You listen, I mean, how, how all, I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. You want to know the hope to which he's called you? Gosh, I think if you just got pregnant with that. If you just got pregnant with the hope that God has for your life, for your family, for your future, for not only in this age, but the age to come. I mean, if I can even think eternally, like there's so much hope right now. This is just a, a take, this is just a deposit. Like the Holy Spirit. Think about how much we experience with the Holy Spirit. Like that's just a deposit. I mean, can you imagine what the full inheritance is gonna be like? Like there's so much hope that we have that we can lean into because of what Christ has done for us. And man, if I could get pregnant with that, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saint, there, saints, there's an inheritance in you and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength. See, this is the thing about being a son and yielding myself to Jesus is that I'm not leaning on my own strength. I'm, 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 I'm leaning on his strength. You know, how much stronger will you and me be when I'm, I'm leaning on his strength? When it's not me, this is, this is the treadmill of performance and self-preservation and all those things, not stepping into the light. I'm, I'm, I'm leaning on my own strength. And I will say this, I've, I've done that <laughs> and still do that at times. And I, I feel the anxiety. I feel the pressure. I feel the panic. I feel the, but man, when I can step into the light and allow God to, 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 to yield to what he's doing and what he's saying, man, there is strength, peace, safety, power, hope, all the, the good stuff. And it's his strength that I'm leaning on. Um, if you're able, I'm going to have the keys come back up. I, I want to I come back to this. Um, there's... <clears throat> I feel like there's just grace for us to change. You want to go higher? You want to just like, man, you want to like my life to, uh, you know, I, I feel like there's just tensions in, in Christianity and what Christ has done for us that 
it's true that he's given you it all. Like he, he's laid down everything for you. It's true that he has given you the deposit of the Holy Spirit. Like when I yield my life to him, I believe in Christ. It's true that he has made me righteous, that he's made me a son and daughter of God, that he's made me a new creation in Christ. It's true that he's blessed me with all spiritual blessings. Like all of that, that is true. I want to learn how to, and I believe that I, I access that not as a, as a performance mentality. I access that by becoming a son. I access that by learning how to receive, like it's in my bank account. But I think if we're probably honest with ourselves, are we accessing everything that he's made available to us? Am I actually walking in the fullness of what Christ has done for me? And I think one of the things, one of the ways that I do that is I let go of control and I actually become a child, a son, and I learn to receive the inheritance that the Father has given me. And I, man, I used to work so hard because I wanted to experience more of God. I wanted to experience His power and miracles. and just I just believed all that because I believed it was the Bible. And He would say, freely receive, freely go give it away. And I just wanted to experience revival and the presence of God. And I used to perform so hard for that. And I would see a measure of it. But the more that I learned to be a son, I felt like I started to see the blessing of God in my life. I started to experience more of the power and the grace of God in my life. And it was out of a place of yielding to him. And, and I, I feel like today that there, there's a yielding of stepping into the light, that there's some areas that we know in our life that we know need to change. There's some places where I'm finding comfort, I'm finding rest in my life, and I need to let some of those things go. So can you stand with me? I do want to open up the altar that if there is anything that's resonating in your heart, and I do think there is something powerful about just responding and just being able to come up to the front and, and pray. And I'm also going to have our prayer servants come up as well. So if you're a prayer servant, you can come on up. But I do just want to pray this over us because I feel like there is grace to stop some things. There's grace to stop porn. Come on. There's grace to stop addictions. There's grace to stop. There's just a, there's a grace for us to yield our hearts to him. And I believe he's going to meet us like a good father, just like Joaquin met me. I believe God's just going to meet us in those places, whatever that looks like. So, Father, I thank you for what you're doing in this room. I thank you that you're the safest place on the planet. into your heart and he's like I've got your heart I care about your heart I love you I love your heart and I just feel like I see him just cutting stuff away that there's some things that we've been entangled with that really died on the on the cross but we've we've just entangled ourselves with and father I thank you that you just come and you in love in kindness in goodness because you you want us to experience more of you because you want more relationship with us because you just you yearn for us and I, I just feel the heart of Jesus over us that he just loves us he just loves us he just wants to be with us it's not a shame thing it's not I don't like you thing it's not a it's just a love thing he just loves you he just wants you he just wants your heart he wants your he wants your affection he want he just loves you so much I just feel that love of the father God I thank you that you are love and your love never changes. It never stops. It never turns off for us. Even when we've missed it a hundred times, God, your love is still being poured out on us. And God, I pray that we would be people of love, 
Lord, that we would actually step into the light and be loved by you like we've never experienced love before, Father. Lord, I thank you for the freedom that's in the room, God. I thank you that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And that, God, you have given us access that we can come boldly before your throne. You you tore the veil for us. You got all the boundaries, all the ways that we couldn't get in. You broke them all, Father, so that we could come in, Father. And God, I thank you that you're breaking the fear of rejection. God, I thank you that you are breaking rejection over us, Father, that, Lord, you don't reject us, us, but, Lord, you love us. Thank you, Father. 